Greetings, Math Solutions, Frosh, and welcome to our first um, homework video. This is what we'll typically be doing uh, in our homework assignments. My hope is that you can learn some material during the videos, and then when we come back together, we uh, can practice it all and learn from one another. So, uh, rather than talking more, I'm, one of my goals this year is to make my videos more succinct and quicker, so let's get right into it. The first thing that we're studying is uh, George Polya's method for problem solving. So this year we're going to do a whole lot of problem solving, and uh, George Polya is kind of uh, kind of the man when it comes to to having a problem solving method that has been studied and used uh, for a number of years. So our learning target is my hope by the end of today's video is you can say that I can describe George Polya's four step problem solving strategy, and my hope is that we can also put it into practice. We're going to do both those things during this video. I found this quote by Polya, uh, as well as a picture of him looking very classy, and it says, it is better to solve one problem five different ways than to solve five problems one way. So hopefully you've already got a feeling from this course that that's what we're going to try and focus on, is not uh, just practicing the same thing over and over again, but rather to, uh, to see how different people approach problems and to learn from one another. So uh, love that from Polya. Here are some pictures of him. You know, a little more serious in his younger days, maybe looking super brilliant with a lot of books here and uh, maybe getting a little happier as time goes on. So he was born in Hungary. Uh, we'll read in the next slide. And he uh, immigrated to the United States eventually in the 1900s. And he went and worked at Stanford. So I think that maybe the California weather caused him to smile maybe a little bit more. So he was a Hungarian who immigrated to the United States in 1940. His major contribution in the is for his work in problem solving. And I just loved this quote I found. It says, growing up, he was very frustrated with the practice of having to regularly memorize information. He was an excellent problem solver. So it is important to be able to memorize things. We will do that in math class this year, um, and you will do it in your other classes as well. But we're finding out more and more, especially in today's age, where we can look up facts uh, and basic values uh, quickly, like with our phones and calculators and computers and whatnot. There's a greater emphasis on critical thinking and problem solving. Uh, and that's what we really need to be able to do. You can't look up problem solving in the same way that you can look up um, a date or a fact or a math rule. So here's his four step plan. And I'm going to ask you to take some notes on the uh, document that I've provided is the four steps of the Polya uh, problem solving plan is first understand the problem. We cannot uh, progress unless we know what's being asked, if we know the details of the problem that we're trying to address. Second is to make a plan, figure out, okay, how is it that we're going to try and answer this? How is it we're going to try and reach a solution or fix this issue? The third is, okay, once you have a plan, you should try it out. You should carry out your plan. And finally, we should always, good mathematicians always uh, look back. And uh, generally, it's a good practice of successful people in general inside math and beyond. So. Polya said that this method uh, can be used in mathematics, but just in life as well, when you're trying to solve any problems in life. And we should always look back at the end and say, how, how well did this work? What strategy was successful? And is there something that I could maybe do different in the future? Something that might be better. This is uh, another way that you may have seen it. So maybe Polya's method has already been part of your math class before. I know I have seen some teachers who have posters like this in their rooms. So study the question. Think of a plan, act on the plan, but always reflect at the end. So again, on, your, um, on the sheet that I provided for you, I'm asking you to do a little extra research. Maybe think about what goes into each of those steps, especially the first two. Um, what are some different plans we can use? And we're going to demonstrate some of those in just a second. I need to plug in real quick. And uh, we're going to try two together, and I'm going to have you do two on your own afterwards. So I have a, I have a little... Um, document pen that I'm hoping is going to work for us. So we'll see about that. So the first one says, suppose Pat has eight shirts and four pairs of pants. How many different outfits can Pat make by combining one shirt and one pair of pants? So um, we need to make sure we understand the question. So the way I understand it is that I understand that we're asking about outfits. Okay. So we want to know about Pat's outfits. How many outfits can he make? And what are the details we know? So we're looking, our question is saying, how many different outfits? 
And I know that we're gonna be combining one shirt and one pair of pants. So that's what a combination is made up of, one shirt and one pair of pants. And then of course, it's really important that we need to know, okay, he has eight shirts total to use and he has four pairs of pants. So these are some key details. We know that our answer should be a, a number of outfits. It's gonna be, in my mind, it's gonna be a decent number. He has quite a wardrobe. Um, and that can help us to kind of get started. This is kind of hard for me to think of. So for me, I think it's gonna be nicer to visualize. So, um, so I know that this is gonna be a way that I can be successful. So the plan that I think I will use in this case is I'll try and draw out a diagram that will be helpful to me. So um, that's the plan that I'm gonna use. So let's carry it out. We're gonna use a diagram. So let's just say diagram. I promise as the year goes on, I get a little bit better. So the diagram I'm gonna do is, um, we have eight shirts and four pairs of pants. I wanna draw connections and we'll just call it like first shirt, second shirt, third shirt, fourth shirt, fifth shirt, blah, blah, blah. And first pants, second pants, third pants. So let's just draw um, a different pair of pants for each one. So that'd be his first pair of pants. We can draw a second pair of pants. We can draw a third. And we can draw four. So we know he has four pairs of pants, so he can make outfits with the white pants, he can make outfits with the blue pants, he can make outfits with the green pants, he can make outfits with the um, red pants as well. Now, rather than trying to draw a bunch of little shirts, I might just draw, um, okay, if he wears the white pants, he can wear shirts with that. I know that he can draw or he can wear eight different shirts. So I'm just gonna draw lines here. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight different um, combinations, white pants with each of the shirts. Same thing will happen here. He can wear each of those shirts with the blue pants. That's five, that's six, that's seven, that's eight. And at this point, I can actually start to maybe figure out what's gonna go on and I can start to, um, I can start to uh, maybe save some time and know that we're gonna have eight here. I think we're gonna have eight, we can wear each of the shirts with the uh, red pants as well. So if these are all the different ways that he can organize his wardrobe. We know that eight plus eight is 16 and eight more is 24 and eight more is 32, or eight times four is 32. Now later in a statistics course, or maybe you've already talked about it, you can talk about com combinations and uh, you would be able to do this in a different way, purely mathematical. But for me, the plan that I used was to, um, was to just use a diagram and that's always valuable. So there's no one way to solve this problem. And in most cases, we'll try and choose problems that have multiple methods like this. So the last step after we've carried out our plan and reached a conclusion is to look back and see, does this make sense? So I think that he has 32 and what does this describe? Well, looking back, we were trying to find a number of outfits and I need to think, does that, is that a reasonable number of outfits that Pat might be able to make if uh, they have eight shirts and four pairs of pants? Well, if I'm imagining this four pairs of pants and eight shirts, uh, yeah, you should have, plenty of different combinations. You can put different shirts with different pants and rewear one article and change the other. So I think that this is a logical or a reasonable answer. So we're good here. We'll say 32 outfits. The next question says, every person at a party of 28 people said hello to each of the other people at the party exactly once. How many hellos were said at the party? So again, we need to understand what is, uh, what is being asked here. And I know that the main question we're asking is how many hellos? So we understand part of the question or part of the problem. Another thing is to realize that we have 28 people. That's important. And they said hello to each of the other people exactly once. So I think exactly once means that there's no repeats. I think that's important for us. So we're starting to understand the problem. We just wanna know the number of hellos as people interact with one another at this big party. But 28 is kind of a big number for me. So what I might do here is I might try and think of a simpler problem. 
I might try and think of uh, an easier problem in which, uh, what if there were only like four of us? How many hellos would there be? So let's say, what if I was at a party with um, maybe Layla and Stephanie and my best friend's name is Daniel. So maybe Daniel as well. So if we're trying to think about it this way, we could say how many hellos are being said here in a group of just four people? This would be easier for me to think about. So let me try and figure out the number of hellos here. Well, in this case, I know that we're gonna have, I would say hello to everyone. So that's one, that's two, that's three. As I said, hello to the other three people. And I know that they would say hello back. They would also say hello to each other. So I'm using the little arrows here to keep track of the hellos. Layla is gonna say hello to Daniel and to me. Stephanie is going to say hello to Daniel and to me. So we found that in a party with four people, how many hellos were there? In a party with four people, we saw that there were, count the arrows with me, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I missed one, didn't I? Stephanie is gonna say hello to Layla. And Layla will say hello back. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. We had 12, 12 hellos. And how are we getting this number? Well, this diagram is helping me to see that from each person, Stephanie is green, she has three green arrowheads. So she said hello to three people. Um, I had three blue arrowheads, Layla had three red arrowheads, Daniel had three white arrowheads. So it seems to me that we kind of multiplied by three here. And this makes sense that if there's four people at the party, each person, four people, is gonna say hello to the number of the people at the party minus one. They don't say hello to themselves. So we can see that if I'm trying to build this up and now think about what about the example of 28 people? Well, I know we have 28 people saying hellos and this diagram helped me see that how many times are they gonna say hello? Well, they're not gonna say it to themselves, but they'll say it to everyone else. So 27 times 28. And that will give me the number of hellos. I'll be honest with you, I don't know that off the uh, top of my head. So I'm gonna pause for a second and we could always just use a calculator. That's fine with me. I'm gonna pause the video is what I meant to do. And if you used your calculator like me, you would get 756. So we found the number of, um, we found the number of hellos, but we didn't necessarily just use a math equation or a formula. In this case, we used a simpler problem and generalized a rule. We figured out kind of the situation by drawing a diagram for a simpler problem and then building it back up to understand what's going on. I'm gonna ask you to try two more on your own. So here they are, the first one says, when Mrs. Johnson counts up all of her cows and chickens, she has a total of 25 animals on her farm. How many of each does she have? That's the wrong pronoun there. How much, many of each does she have if altogether there are 76 feet? So think about the difference in feet between chickens and cows. And the second one says, place the digits 8, 10, 11, 12, and 13 in the circles to make the sums across and vertically, so across and vertically, each one should get a sum of 31. So if you don't know what a sum is, maybe look that one up real quick. I'm gonna leave you at that. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to uh, do some scratch work and tend to enter the pictures of the work that you've done uh, into the document that you're submitting as uh, proof of, of uh, completing this video. Best of luck and I'll see you soon. Peace.